Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Well, I have a lot to cover in this episode. I've been um, tackling a bunch of different things, so this video is going to be about a, a lot of different things. Um, uh, primarily, the whole shutdown of the observatory and uh, the star, the sun, our sun in general. And uh, as far as uh, I do have a video that I recommend, Carrie Cassidy with Project Camelot did an interview just a couple of days ago with Simon Parks, and they cover a lot of different interesting things. It's a, almost a two-hour broadcast that I highly recommend. It gets into the sun, it gets into the observatory like we're going to be talking about. Also, QAnon. Now, that's one of the cool things. You know, I did a video a while back that it appeared that an AI could be involved with the whole QAnon phenomenon. I, of course, I put everything on the shelf. You know, is it a, a white hat psyop to sort of wake people up to what's happening? Others think it's a deep state psyop, which I... Of course, I consider everything, but I don't see why, you know, they would air out all their dirty laundry like that. Uh, other people think that it's uh, just people trying to capitalize. The information is good. I don't really see why it's that important about where it's coming from because the information's all out there. It's not like they're providing anything that you can't find on your own. They're just sort of saying, hey, look at this, look at this, put it together. But in this interview with Kerry Cassidy on Project Camelot, uh, Simon Parks brings up the fact that uh, this is a, a very small group of people utilizing an advanced AI running on a quantum computer and that uh, there's this battle going on between the AIs and it's, it's really amazing when you consider the day and age we live in now and that, you know, there's this secret uh, warfare going on behind the scenes between these two AIs one trying to protect secrets, the other trying to release the secrets. And uh, it's just, it's amazing because he talks about how it can sort of predict the future using uh, probability and things like that. So I think you'll enjoy the video. It was definitely mind expanding. Now that we're talking about disclosure with aliens and spacecraft and we're, you know, we have footage of what looks to be uh, many craft going into the sun. Let me actually pull this up. Uh, this was from uh, Gina Maria Colvin. You can check this out on her Facebook page. It looks as if there are a number of spaceships caught here next to the sun. And this has been going around on the internet. Now, I don't really know. I would need to know a lot more about how the pictures were taken and uh, to sort of rule out any camera artifacts or uh, lens anomalies that were created uh, in the way, the fashion that the, the images were taken. Because I thought these were actually telescope images at first with a solar filter on. But here, this appears to be the reflection of the camera lens. And this image here appears to be a, sort of a, either a fisheye lens or a wide angle lens. And I can see how if you combine a wide angle lens, which is actually the opposite of a zoom, if you think about it, it pulls away the images uh, even further. So if we're looking at the sun here and we've got all of these anomalies that's occurring from the fact that the, uh, the lens that's being used, maybe, maybe one of those clip on lenses that you put, you clip right on your phone. I've got those, I've got the zoom one and I've got the wide angle and the fisheye lens. And they produce this sort of effect where you get all of these uh, strange anomalies from the lens being warped so much. And if this is how the pictures were taken, I can't really uh, rule out the fact that this could even be, you know, dust or something on the lens. I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to be open-minded about it. Uh, what I would do, um, if, if Gina, if you're listening to this, is perhaps to try it on a different light source, like maybe just go in the house and point your camera at a uh, like just an incandescent light bulb on a lamp and zoom in and see if you can get the same effect because this could be scratches or, or dust on the lens. I just don't know enough about how they were taken. They sure do look like craft. I mean, these are some incredible images, but uh, with having so limited of information around how the pictures were taken, what equipment was used, it's hard to uh, say if these are anything... Uh, out of this world, as they say. 
Uh, so a little bit of something to consider there. But fascinating pictures. I do have this link below. You can go check these out for yourself. She also has a video. Uh, so thank you, Gina Maria Colvin, for uh, sharing these images. On to the New Mexico Observatory closure. This is being reported by Reuters just here in the last day. Uh, a little bit more information uh, as it relates to the mysterious 11-day closure of the New Mexican Solar Observatory. They're now saying it stemmed from an investigation, an FBI investigation of a janitor suspected of using the facility's wireless internet service to send and receive illegal content. I'll leave it at that because the algorithms will definitely catch if I say anything like that. So that's not really what this video is about though. So let me move on to what I was able to capture. This was taken from February 15th of 2017. Uh, this image here, and I did this video, this has been over a year since I, I put this video out, so a lot of subscribers probably didn't see it. So when you look at it here, you can see that it's really strange. You can see the sun, but normally it just looks, you know, it's it takes the brightness down on it where you can see the sun without it being so bright. But whenever this object gets in front of the camera, it causes the camera to malfunction and the sun becomes really bright. And uh, there's certain pixels here that stayed uh, dark, but uh, whatever this object is, it had to adjust the camera to be able to pick it up and see it clearly. Note the angle of this coming in at, I don't know, like, what is that, right, 2 o'clock, 1.30? And it goes into right around the center of the sun. Now, I'm not sure. At the time when I did this video, I thought it could be something like an orb or something. But when I just came across this video here from this year, just uh, August 1st, you see it goes by really fast. You have to really look for it. So when we back it up and we get it on the frame that malfunctioned, you can see that we have the same exact thing. Here it is over a year later, a year and a half later. And uh, it's not the same frame. It's not like they repeated it or anything, but you can see that it's almost coming in at the exact same angle as before. So it makes me wonder if it's some sort of apparatus connected on an arm that's, you know, because they put the disc out in front of the camera. So I'm really not sure. I thought it was like uh, the sun is a portal and something. So this is enormous and it looks like it left a streak going in or coming out. But when I noticed that it looked like it was at the same exact angle as before, it made me wonder if it's just something connected to the actual satellite equipment. So not really sure about that. Here you can see there was another shot where it malfunctioned and you can see that line is in the same area. So I did want to bring that out because it does look like the sun is sort of a portal when you look at this, but being that it's this, what's the chances of it being that same exact angle? I'm not really sure. Now onto this same website here, you can see this website is iswa.gsfc.nasa.gov and you can get in to look at these different tools with the SOHO and the SDO. Now this, uh, what I'm about to show you, comes from the day before the Solar Observatory closed down. So I went back to check to see if anything strange happened. The SOHO wasn't taken down on, on here, but if you go to the SOHO website, it's uh, been taken down for some reason. But you can still view it on this site. So I don't know if it's just that website down or what, but I'd heard people report that. But you can still check the data here. But we're missing frames on some of these, so it makes me wonder why they would delete some of the frames. Um, were they showing a little bit more than what we see in these that they allowed to stay in? But this is, this is what you find if you go and you check the day before they closed down the solar observatory. Clearly something goes in front of, or let's say it goes between the sun and the solar dynamics observatory. And whatever it is doesn't have a hard line on it. It appears to be uh, closer to the camera, I would say, because it's just blurring it out at the edge. It's not like a hard line. And I brought this up with Michelle Wolf the other day. Uh, so I really don't know what it is. But you can see on the, on the ones that are missing the frames, they just jump over the time 
where it should be visible on these instruments. On other ones, uh, they, see they all take pictures at different times. So some of them catch some of this, uh, whatever this object is, eclipsing the sun. And like I said, it appears to be something close to the camera in my opinion, closer to the, the camera. And I'll show that here because I've got some images of the new moon passing in front of the sun that we captured on the 9th as I was looking through this footage. But these are the different perspectives. Here this just catches one frame. But something clearly goes in between there. Now this is the composite. So this is going to be where they sort of combine them all together. And you can see here something definitely eclipses the sun from the perspective of the SDO. And you can note the timestamps at the bottom. Here's a, another composite view. And there you can see they're actually jumping over the frames that would show anything in that composite view for some reason. Because it happens right around 6.45 UTC time. And here's another view. Here on this one you can see the increments go in 15 minute increments. 6.15, 6, 6.15, 6.30. At 6.45 is when the event happens, yet it skips over 6.45 on this view, jumps right to 7. So why did they remove that frame? Did it show something? These are the questions I'm asking here. I have no idea. It's all speculation. But here again, we see on this SDO view, it jumps over the 645, 645 frame that would have shown something happening. Here on the stereo coronagraph 2, you can see right at the time when the event happens, uh, which this is at 639, and this takes a picture, it starts to dim. Here we have the SDO AIA-94 captures one single frame of this event that happened. Now, like I said, this is from September 5th, the day before they actually shut down the observatory. Here we have another one. Now this one here takes frames a little bit more often, so you're able to see a little bit more of this eclipse event that happens where something goes over the sun. It does have one malfunctioning frame there you can see. Not sure what's causing that, but there we have it. Something is definitely obstructing the view of the sun from the perspective of the SDO. Now keep in mind the SDO is a satellite out in space. So, And if uh, the object was closer to that, then it could have been well out of the line of sight uh, from Earth's perspective. So this might not have been able to have been captured from the ground, of course, but you can see here that something is definitely going in front of the sun here at the uh, AIA-171. Now here's the AIA-193 view. Here we have another series of frames right around this 645 event. And uh, yeah, so something's definitely eclipsing it from these different perspectives from the SDO, Solar Dynamics Observatory. So what's going on here? I have no idea. Could this be why they shut it down? Uh, if you check out that Simon Parks interview from Project Camelot I just mentioned, he talks about they, uh, they knew something was going to happen and they didn't realize it would be visible, so they had no other choice than, than to shut down the observatories. Now, the only observatory I can verify even got shut down was the Sunspot Observatory uh, in New Mexico. I heard up to six other ones, like in Hawaii and around the world, got shut down. I cannot verify that myself personally. I'm not saying it isn't true. I just can't find any information on it. So if you look here, you can see during the new moon, it just so happens you can see the moon pass by the sun from the SDO's point of view, and you can see it come right back by as it sort of swung out in front of the SDO. And this was on the 9th, a couple hours after we experienced the new moon from Earth's perspective. And then on the 12th, I noticed some strange anomalies where the SDO seemed to be shaking. Uh, I don't know what caused it to shake, but you can see that this shows up on several of the uh, different lenses on the SDO where it looks like something causes a, a vibration on the satellite itself. You can see here something definitely 
jarred the SDO on the 12th of September, causing it to produce some really strange anomalies here. And of course, I wanted to share this artist rendition I saw of the SDO so you can see how it's got the different telescopes mounted uh, on the satellite. So that's why the perspective is slightly different when you see the composition and you see the object covering the sun. I think that's another indicator that whatever the object was was closer to the satellite because the distances between these would be negligible if whatever was obstructing the view of the sun was closer to the sun. But the fact that we can uh, see a difference in the composite lets us know that whatever it was was much closer. You know, and it could have been another satellite. I, I don't really know. But I do know that uh, it's strange that we see this, this uh, something eclipsing the view of the sun from the SDO the day before the solar observatory closes down. So just throwing more options out there for us to consider. So a lot of interesting things happening. Uh, I just can't absorb it all enough. I'm trying to put out information with you guys too, still be the content creator. While I'm sort of gathering all this information, I've been revisiting the book by Dolores Cannon called Keepers of the Garden. It's amazing how much more information you can get out of a book when you haven't read it for a while and my perspectives changed so much so I'm going to be going over some information with that I'll make it more like a book review uh, for it so if you haven't read it definitely want to check it out but I will be going over some information in that because it opened up some more possibilities as far as uh, you know expanding our consciousness and how we see things so I can't wait to get to that I do have a lot coming down the pipeline so I do thank you all for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. If you'd like to support the work I do, go to paypal.me slash UOTF. Thanks.